Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to The Photo Show. In the past year, the phrase AI has been making quite a lot of news, mainly with text applications like ChatGPT. It's then developed into things like AI video, AI music. But more recently, AI photography has been what's grabbing all of the headlines. Now, this all started off quite innocently about six months ago when a photo appeared on the internet of Pope Francis wearing a large white puffer jacket. A lot of news feeds picked up on this and it was obvious to everyone that this was a fake photograph. But this is something we've been able to do for years. In fact, even I did it on a video a few years ago showing you how you could fake a photograph. Just to prove it, here's me sitting next to Jay-Z at a boxing match. Now, I've never met Jay-Z and I didn't go to that boxing match but I was able to fake that photograph using Photoshop. The difference between my image and the one of Pope Francis wearing the puffer jacket is that there was no photography involved in the Pope Francis image. It was all AI generated. And this has led to a lot of speculation as to whether AI is gonna spell the end of photography. We're <laughs> now, as I said, this started off quite innocently enough. Now this took a different turn a few months ago when German photographer Boris Engelsen entered the Sony World Photography Competition under the Creative Open category with this image. And subsequently, won. The only problem was, Boris didn't take this photograph. It was AI generated. To Boris's credit, when he was announced as the winner, he immediately contacted Sony to tell them that this wasn't a genuine photograph, that it was AI generated. And in fact, he'd submitted the image to the competition to see if the photography world was open to the idea of AI photography and also to highlight the fact that this should be treated as a completely different genre. The photography and AI image generation do not belong together. So I thought what we do today is we take a look at AI photography or AI image generation just to find out if as photographers we're doomed. So let's jump on the computer and take a closer look at AI photography. Okay, so now we've talked about what AI photography is and what it actually involves, let's have a look at what we can actually do with this. Now, there are a number of programs that are around at the moment. There's Mid Journey, there's a thing called Dali. I've actually been invited to join a thing called Leonardo.ai, which is a, an AI image generation site. One of the reasons that I've picked this one is because it's actually free to use. And I think it would be unfair for me to be paying to do this. Let's see how we go. When you open up Leonardo AI, you can see this is the home page. As you can see down here, there are a lot of examples of other people's work. A lot of it's sort of in the comic book fantasy kind of style. There's a few sort of watercolors and stuff like that. But what we're actually looking for is photography here. I've been playing around with this for a while. This is in no way a tutorial. There is no way, as you're about to find out, there is no way I'm good enough at this to teach it this. There's plenty of good tutorials on YouTube that you can look at and find out more about how to actually use this program. I'm basically just gonna go through and have a look at how we can use this to make photographic style images. There's a ton of different options. These are all what they call models. I'm gonna keep it absolutely on basic on the the Leonardo Diffusion, which is the, the opening one. Before we start, let's have a look at what, I've been playing around with this for a week or so, and let's have a look at sort of some of the things I've managed to achieve. So let's go to the, my personal feed here. So going in the style of what we've already been talking about with image generation, I thought what I'd do is I'd start off with something completely ludicrous in the same way as the Pope in a puffer jacket. And so I asked AI to produce images of Jimi Hendrix riding a unicorn. This is some of the options that he gave me. And as you can see, they aren't great. But then a lot of that's probably just down to the fact that all I simply asked it for was an image of Jimi Hendrix riding a unicorn. The best option that we came up with, I think was this one. You know, as you can see, it's fairly photographic. It's a man riding a unicorn. I'm not 100% sure it looks like Jimi Hendrix. It more looks like Morgan Freeman playing Prince in a biopic, but it did give us what we asked for, but it was a very basic image prompt. We then decided to go a little bit more extreme. So we asked it for Colonel Sanders as if he was in the insane clown posse. And this is the best example we've got of that. Again, this is just messing around. This is, you know, just trying to see exactly what you get from basic prompts. So the next thing I decided to do was see if we could do something that was similar to the award-winning photograph. So what I decided to do was try and see if I could describe in words what the original image looked like. So the prompt I put in was a photo of two 1950s women, one whispering to the other in a wet plate style image. 
this is the image that we actually ended up getting. Now this isn't the same as Boris's award-winning image, but it is interesting. It's obviously not a genuine photograph. You can see that there's some trickery going on here that it's image generated. But as an image, it's very interesting. The posing, the, the setting, the, the looking to the camera. It's quite an interesting image. I then decided to have a think about what kind of images that you, you couldn't use AI for. There's obviously a lot of work. I mean, although the AI is producing really interesting looking portraits, it's not of any particular person. You know, if, I, if I'm asked to go and take a portrait, I'm asked to take a portrait of a particular person and therefore it's the interaction between that person as a subject and myself as a photographer. Whereas the AI is creating people. I mean, for example, I used it as a prompt to just see what we could get. I, this, the, the prompt for this was photo of a European woman, 30 years old, wearing a le leather jacket, looking at the camera, wet plate style image. And as you can see, it's a really interesting photograph. But this woman doesn't exist. I don't know this woman. But what I would say is it does give some really interesting ideas for if you were posing photographs. I mean, the lighting and the pose and the look on this image I, I would be, you know, if I'd taken this as a photograph, I'd be over the moon with this. It's just that I didn't take it as a photograph. The AI generated it. And as far as I know, this woman doesn't exist. Another aspect I thought of was what happens with product photography. How good could it be at product photography? I decided to type in a magazine style photo of a bacon, lettuce and tomato sandwich cut diagonally on a grey slate base taken on a Nikon D6 camera. And I've got to say, it's not perfect. I mean, you can see here that it hasn't rendered the edge of the bread properly. That actually looks more like meat than bread. But this doesn't exist. This isn't real bread. These aren't real tomatoes. This isn't real lettuce. That's not real slate. Would a magazine use this as, as an image? Possibly. But it, it could also be used as something as like a mood board idea. If you were looking for ideas for images to put up, you could definitely use... AI prompts to give you an image. I decided to go again as uh, another product shot and asked for close-up magazine style photo of an expensive watch showing uh, 10 to 10 on a grey slate base shot on a Nikon D6. Okay, it's no actual brand of watch. So therefore, as far as an advertising or editorial piece, it's of no commercial value. But this watch doesn't exist. AI has created this watch, showing the time that I asked it to show. There are issues, the numbers are wrong, that they, you know, I think, I think lettering and names is somewhere where the AI falls down at the moment. But the other thing to remember is at the moment, this is in its infancy, this is as bad as it's gonna be. How do you actually do this? Let's give this a go. So this is, this is basically just looking at what's already been done. So let's go to AI image generation. And now we have a box at the top here where we can add in our prompt. So let's begin. Now I've been, I've been looking up ways of, of prompting uh, AI. If you're giving it a subject, a place, and a style, you should get a better result. So I'm gonna try and see if we can recreate the award-winning photo again. So let's give this a go. So let's ask for two women from the 19, 40s. One whispering to the other on a plain background. That's about plain, right? That'll be handy. A plain background. Light. Okay. Natural lighting. And again, I'm going to say wet plate style image because that to me is what that image looks like it looks like it was shot on an old wet plate style camera so what this is what the prompt we've got is two women from the 1940s one whispering to the other on a plain background light bouquet natural lighting wet plate style image I've said it here so it's going to give us four examples so this is going to generate four options for this image actually I need to add one more thing I'm going to add black and white now I'm going to click generate now this is the bit I enjoy actually, because at the moment we don't know what we're going to get. 
So three, two, one, go. Now we wait for the program to generate the images. Is it going to be anything like the award winning photo? No. <laughs> oh, okay. So here's, here's some of the things. Let's just go through these images one by one. So this is the first image that's come up. Now, first off, you can see that the AI has, has made some error here with this additional hair that's been brought into the face. They look a little bit like mannequins. It doesn't look like the original image, but it is a really interesting image. Okay, let's go to the next one. Again, it doesn't look like the original image, but what we have come up with is a very interesting image style of image the, the the posing is something you could definitely use in photography the lighting that has the slightly creepier vibe which maybe is something we can add in the other has a slightly disturbing feel about it of the four we got i think i really like that one I like that one and that one's really interesting as well okay let's add something into the prompt let's so we've got that prompt at the moment let's make it um, so we've got exactly the same prompt all I've added in is the phrase slightly disturbing so let's go again let's click generate again three two one go it's quite exciting wait for this bit okay so now we've got four more image choices we all we've done is we've changed one small element to it again not perfect you can see there's issues here with the wrinkles of the skin on the neck but posing wise it's very interesting and it, it does have a slightly creepier disturbing ah okay again it's not exactly like the original image but we're definitely pulling something closer in that genre, in that vibe. I mean, that has a still from, almost like a still from a, a classic Hollywood movie. The reason I'm pausing here is because in the same issue, this is the first time I've seen these images. So I'm making a, a decision, a snap decision as I'm looking at them. Really interesting. So uh, yeah, I think what we're showing there is, yes, without knowing exactly what the original prompt was, and I've done a bit of detective work to see if I can find out what the original prompt was. One of the things I have done is I thought we'd double up the um, AI experiment here, and I've used an AI word generator to give me a prompt based on the original photograph. So let's see what happens if we put that prompt in. So the prompt that the AI tool generated, and I actually use Google Bard, so I haven't used it, which is similar to ChatGPT. Again, I'm in no position to teach you anything about AI. There are plenty of good tutorials on YouTube. Go and look at one of those if you want more details. But basically, what I asked the AI to do was to give me an image description of the award-winning photo, the electrician. I, I gave it as many details as I could. This is what it came back with. A black and white portrait of two women from different generations. The older woman is crouched behind the younger woman, her face filled with fear. The younger woman is facing the camera, her expression one of defiance. A large gloved hand reaches out from the darkness behind them. I'm not too sure about the large gloved hand bit. There is a hand on the shoulder in the original image. Let's just set AI against AI and give the AI image prompt to the AI image generator. Three, two, one, go. It's exciting. What are we going to get? Now, this is one of the other things I've found with uh, generating the AI images. If you don't specify, it's, it may just be with the, with this program, the Leonardo. It may be different with Mid Journey and Dali, but we didn't specify an ethnicity. 
we actually we didn't specify an ethnicity in the other one, but we did say 1940s, which I, I don't know. It kind of implies you're talking wartime. It's taken different elements here. I'm now trying to work out. For a start, we asked for a photo of two women. We have three women. Again, we have three women. Okay, this time we have two women. That's closer. And that's just weird. Right, let's see if we can adapt that one more. Let's combine the two of what we did. Black and white portrait of two women from the 1940s. I'm going to forget about the glove, but I am going to say I'm going to use my prompt of wet plate style image. The reason I keep putting wet plate style images, the, the, that's what the original photo reminds me of. It, 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 I don't know how much of the original AI image was then adjusted in Photoshop or other programs. Because it is an art piece. It, 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 he's been really clear that it's not a photograph. It's an AI generated image. As to, as to how much work was done on that image afterwards to add what makes it look like damage to the image or uh, the, the fact that it looks like it was shot on, on a wet plate style camera. Okay, so now we have a black and white portrait of two European women from the 1940s from different generations. The older woman is crouched behind the younger woman, her face filled with fear. The younger woman is facing the camera. Her expression is one of defiance. Light bouquet, wet plate style image. Let's click again. This reminds me of when you used to work in the darkroom and wait for your print to come through in the developer. Okay. Now, again, I don't know why it's given us three women because we've asked for two women. We specifically asked for two women, but it's given us three women. When you take the original photo, these two women look similar. The posing's different and the feel of the image is slightly different, but these two women are not massively dissimilar from the original really interesting but you can see actually on, on this one it's definitely using the same facial model and just aging it up the, the nose is virtually identical the the eyes are similar the eyebrow shape is similar so there you go that's how ai image generation works i thought this is an interesting way of experimenting with it to see if we could recreate the the, the photo that caused all the controversy back at the sony world Im world photo awards before we go Let's try one more thing. Pope Francis wearing a large white puffer jacket. Outside photograph, natural light taken on a Nikon D6. So there we go. This is, this is a, just a rough guess of the prompt that was used to do the Pope photograph. Generate, see what we get. <laughs> do you know what? <laughs> okay, it's not the same as the other image. But it's Pope Francis wearing a large puffer jacket. And it looks like it's photographed on a modern DSLR camera. That's cracking. So there we go. We've had some fun. We've experimented around with AI image generation. Is this photography? No. I think the best description I've heard so far is promptography. Photography is using light. Photography is, by its very nature, the word photo means light, graph means draw, so it's light drawing. We're not using light here. We're using descriptions and words. And I think this is the key to this. The better you are at describing what the image you want, the better your result you'll get. Photographers and graphic artists will have a bigger advantage on this because if you're able to describe technical aspects of the image you will probably end up with a better result but this is not photography it may be a whole new genre will i use it i might use it for giving ideas for like mood board ideas i tell you where i'd probably use it is if i was designing album covers or promotional stuff for for bands if you wanted some fantasy look something different what's the best one we've got i think probably that one 
I think from, from the little experiment we've done here, I think that's probably the image that I would say is my favorite. So there we go. That concludes our look at AI photography, AI image generation, promptography, whatever you want to call it. Is this the end of photography? No. To be honest, we've been through this kind of thing time and time again. If you look back in history, when cameras first appeared, portrait painters thought this was the end of their world. But what happened is photography became one thing and painting changed into something else. Before the camera, portrait paintings were very photorealistic. After the camera, things like impressionism and cubism and different styles of painting came along. And hopefully these kind of things can happen with photography. Now that we've got an image generation that can create photorealistic images, maybe photography will change. Maybe we'll move into different areas. We'll experiment more and we'll find different ways of producing more interesting images. I definitely think there is a place for AI image generation. It's brilliant as we've shown today for throwing up ideas, for posing, lighting, to give you a template for something that you could base your photography on. You could also use it to create really interesting fantasy backgrounds that you could use in your own photography images. So I wouldn't write it off totally. Will I carry on using it? Possibly. I think there's definitely things I could use AI generated images for, combining it more with traditional photography. I definitely think there's a place for that. I hope you've enjoyed what we've been doing. Please leave us some comments below. I'd really love to hear what you have to think about AI generated images. And if you've got any interesting image prompts that you'd like me to try out, leave them as well and I might give them a go. And if you are still worried about AI taking over the world, here's a short compilation of robots falling over to make you feel better. For now, I'm Dave Vickers. This is The Photo Show. Thanks for watching. See you next time.